Next, we're going to talk about the eight functions that are necessary to sustain life. Number one, we need to maintain boundaries. We need to keep the inside distinctly different from the outside. That can mean the skin maintains the boundaries so things don't just get into our body. That's important. But also, on a cellular level, the cell membrane needs to be keep inside and outside separate. Second, we have movement. Activities are promoted by the muscular systems. The muscles attached to the bones move us around, but also muscles determine, make the food go through the body and also determine how much blood is shunted to different organs. Thirdly, we deal with the fact that we can respond to changes in the environment. If we burn a finger on a stove, we pull it away from the stove. We call that responsiveness, or we can also call that quality irritability. Then digestion is number four. Breaking down of food particles, ingested foods, into small enough molecules that then can be absorbed into the bloodstream, all that function goes on in digestion. Metabolism is a very complicated one, a little more tricky. Those are all chemical reactions that occur inside the body cell. They have to do with breaking down material to in part harvest energy but also building blocks to then put stuff back together, like make proteins. So we have all those chemical reactions are considered metabolic reactions. And then we got to get rid of waste that we don't need, and that's in excretion. Now you can only imagine a swamp system that has, you know, all that stuff stays behind. That's going to be making the body toxic, and we can't survive that. So we need to excrete what we don't need. Feces is the solid stuff, urine and sweat are both liquids, and breathing is to get rid of gases, waste. And then we need to reproduce. In order to sustain life, cells need to make two daughter cells, but organisms need to also reproduce, so we don't go extinct. Finally, growth. We have to grow, we have to increase in size, it is not viable for us to stay baby level. That increase in size often means we have to divide cells and make more and more, and that goes on the growth. Next, we need things to survive. We need absolute things to survive. All you need is love, of course, is true, but we need, we're talking about more fundamental stuff here. Um, nutrients, we need nutrients. If we don't eat, well, guess what? No food, no energy, no life. We have macronutrients that we eat. Those are carbohydrates and proteins and fats. And we have to also bring micronutrients into our system. Vitamins and minerals. They are very important for body functions. And then, as we've seen before, we are mostly water. So guess what? Water intake is very important. We need oxygen. Without oxygen, we cannot release the energy that is stored in the food. Now, another thing we need is, is, a, is a steady temperature. Our inside temperature is 37 Celsius, 98 Fahrenheit, and that needs to be stable. If it's too low, we'll stop metabolic reactions. If it's too hot, they will get very fast and erratic. And if it's even hotter than that, the protein will denature, and that's not going to work out. And lastly, on my list here, is atmospheric pressure. Pressure is the force exerted on the surface of the body by the weight of the air. Holy moly. But what is heavily depending on that is actually our breathing. The going in and out of gases into our lungs has a lot to do with with pressure, with atmospheric pressure. So that's one place where we can see the importance of that. All right, we're getting somewhere. Let's now talk about the probably most difficult topic of today, and that is homeostasis. That is the ability to maintain a relatively stable internal environment of the body, even though the outside is changing all the time. Homeo means the same, and stasis refers to standing still. 
Having to maintain a stable internal body environment is not easy, it's very challenging. Because that means we have to, for example, have an exact level of calcium in our blood. Or the blood sugar needs to be steady. And, and we eat stuff, and so blood sugar fluctuates. So we need to make sure that keeps at a level that is tolerable for the body and not too much. So the constant balancing is so important and is so vast that it has its own concept, and that is termed negative feedback mechanisms, or that's a negative feedback loop. And again, that is, if it's too hot, we need the body's AC to cool down the inside. And we do that through sweating. If it's too cold, on the other hand, we need to put on the body's heater. This is done through shivering, and then muscle action generates heat that warms the body. The body uses the opposite action in order to keep the inside stable. And how does the body do that? Well, that's done by the homeostatic control system. Well, we need to have a variable that needs to be detected by a receptor. That's number one, well, number two there. This information then is sent to a control center, and that's usually the brain. That is the afferent pathway that you can see there. Learn that word, because afferent means moving towards the brain. And since the brain sits on top, I remember the word starting with an A as in ascending, because the opposite action, if you look at where it says there, after the control center, where we integrate the information, it says efferent pathway, because the next, that's the next step, step. After the decision is made of what to do with this change, we need to then send that stimulus and that impulse to a muscle or to a gland. And that's the efferent pathway, and I remember that because E is like an exit, uh, because the impulse exits the brain. And then, at the end, the effector uh, executes the necessary response. Body functions are balanced through this negative feedback mechanism. We also have an, an opposite mechanism, and that's known as the positive feedback mechanism. And some, of, some necessary action in our body, such as childbirth, um, where the temporary intensification of needs to be done, like the uterus will contract more and more and more and more until the baby is pushed out, and then it will stop. So for a brief period, that um, is an intensification of a process is necessary. Blood clotting is also something like that, or the milk letdown when the baby needs to be breastfed. The problem, however, is that many disease processes, such as cancer, develop through a positive feedback. By, they grow stronger as they increase in size.